So I'm working on the 2002 Chevrolet Suburban 1500 5.3 liter uh, with a Vortex system. I'm working on the intake manifold today. I'm putting a intake manifold gasket on the intake uh, because I was uh, the vehicle was registering a PO 174 lean condition and based on my research it appears uh, that that's probably what's affecting the vehicle. Uh, at startup the vehicle really runs uh, rough the rpms can't stabilize and then when you get going and the vehicle warms up everything sort of smooths out so it leads me to believe that i'm getting too much uh too much air into the into the engine not enough fuel the computer tries to compensate but then the vehicle sort of lurches and uh it'll it'll rev up on its own for a little bit and it's just not a not a fun situation so i have pulled the intake out um, i have removed the uh the old gaskets the uh from the factory gaskets off of the intake and now i'm just cleaning up a little bit now some people online say that uh, pulling the intake and putting the the uh, gaskets on and putting it back in the vehicle is about a two hour uh process that's not what I found. It takes longer than that. Uh, and the reason it does is you got a lot of cleaning ahead of you. Um, there are a lot of crevices in this intake and it just, it takes a lot to clean. Um, this vehicle is a high mileage vehicle around 235,000 miles. So I'm not going to, uh, to detail this out like it's going to be a, a, a showroom car. Uh, I'm just going to try to do as best I can to uh, make sure that I don't have any crud around the uh, mating surfaces for the gasket and everything and just uh, enough to be able to inspect the channels here on the intake to make sure that nothing is cracked. Um, so if we take a look at this at this view of the intake uh, uh, out of the vehicle, um, you've got your um, you've got your coolant line here that flows into your throttle body. Uh, you've got your throttle position sensor, you've got some emissions control here. This is to the fuel pressure regulator right here. You got your fuel rail with your Schrader valve over there. You've got your fuel pressure regulator, and then you've got your injectors here on the V8 engine. You've got four injectors on each side. Um, and then you've got uh, this hose goes to your PCV valve, which I'm going to uh, replace today. It's a very cheap item. Um, and then that will go into your valve cover on your, your driver's side. And then the back hose there, which I'll pan around in a second to show you, uh, that goes to the brake booster. So I just decided to leave all that on when I took it out uh, so that I wouldn't have to remove these clamps and, and possibly uh, damage the vacuum hose here or the clamping back there that holds on the brake booster uh, hose. And then we've got two fuel lines. You've got one up top there and one in the bottom. You've got the incoming and the return Here's line. Here's the other side of the, of the intake manifold. Uh, this hose here goes into the um, passenger side um, valve cover to reburn, I guess, unspent vapor there, uh, unburned vapor that's still left, kind of recycles it. And then you've got your four injector connections on this side, throttle body again, and then this is the brake booster cable that I was telling you about uh, down here that I had to pull. It was under some vacuum when I pulled it. So here's the underside of the intake manifold. When I initially pulled it, it was absolutely filthy. These channels had a lot of uh, debris in them um, because I had some uh, valve cover leaks. And so uh, I had uh, just a lot of, lot of crud up in them. You can see a little bit still here. I'm not gonna worry too much about uh, some of that because it's not gonna affect performance. It's just, just on the surface. Um, but I'm gonna make sure that these mating surfaces are clean on all four ports on on this side and then the four ports on the other side keep in mind that these are your injector tips here and you want to make sure that those are clean i may take a little q-tip with a little gasoline and just make sure they're clean but in, in a in a uh, procedure like this sometimes less is more um you you want to be real careful with how, how you clean and what you clean with um it's an older vehicle you don't want to do something that's going to damage the vehicle and something else that you have to fix so less can be more um, speaking of when i when i uh, removed the connector for the throttle position sensor i did not think that i had broken that plastic there but i had i mean this is a 20 year old vehicle and it may have been cracked so that broke uh during this process here uh this little line here is uh also coolant line you've got a long one that goes on um 
on this side that, that hooks up to the connection there, that metal connection, and this is a shorter stubbier hose that fits in behind your alternator. So uh, my recommendation on these channels, if they've got a lot of uh, debris in them, just take uh, a rag or a paper towel. Be careful if you, if you use a paper towel because they have a tendency to fray, but uh, get in those channels and you're gonna, have, um, you're gonna have some grit and grime up in those channels. You're not gonna be able to go all the way up in there but you should improve, improve your uh, airflow marginally if you'll just clean them just a little bit. So that would be right, my recommendation. But again, be very careful with these injector tips here because you don't want to have to replace an, uh, an injector as part so of this Here's problem. the engine bay at this juncture. I've done a little bit of cleaning here. Again, I'm not going to try to make everything perfect. Um, you've got your valley cover here with your two knock sensors with the boots on top and the electrical cord to both of those. Now, some people say that when you're doing this job, you ought to replace the knock sensors. The problem with that is that a lot of people also say that if you get aftermarket knock sensors, they, sensors, they have a tendency to fail. Even the AC Delco ones, some people say that. I don't know, but they do say that online. So if you do your research, I think you're probably going to come to the same conclusion. So I'm not getting any codes whatsoever for the knock sensors, so I am not going to replace them. I don't see any uh, moisture or water down here in the channel. Um, there are styrofoam, well, foam boots on both ends of the intake, I'll show those to you in a second, that are supposed to prevent, um, I guess, water and moisture from, from getting in these knock sensors. Mine look good, um, so I'm going to leave them alone because I could get in there and replace them and then 200 miles later, even if I put AC Delco in or aftermarket uh, knock sensors in, I could throw a, a, a check engine code, and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to, it's 235,000 miles on this vehicle. I'm just going to leave them alone because I'm not getting any code there. I'm not even going to pull them. I'm not even going to inspect them uh, because you have, a, you, know, you have a possibility of breaking this electrical connection here. If I have to pull the intake again uh, to replace the knock center, sensors, then that's just what I'll do. Those knock sensors are designed to uh, pick up on any, um, irregularity or what am I trying to say any vibration um, unusual vibration in the motor to so that the computer can adjust the timing on the vehicle um, so they certainly do serve a purpose uh, you, you know you may not run quite right if something happens to one of the sensors but I just I just don't after all the research I've done I just don't want to remove those those sensors and replace them so uh, I did the valve cover gaskets yesterday to prevent any leaking oil down in the channels because that was causing some of the grit and grime. Uh, the only other things that I did here um, before the, the install, you know, beyond removing everything to, to, um, to remove the intake from the vehicle is there's a, uh, there's a ground back here. That was oil saturated. I went ahead and pulled that bolt and I cleaned up that, uh, very carefully cleaned up that connection and uh, put that back. I had previously already um, replaced the oil sending unit, so fortunately that's not something I have to do today. But if I did have to do it, this would be the optimum time to do it because when I did it, uh, I had to reach in behind the engine blindly and put that in, and it was not a fun experience. So I, I think I'm about as detailed as I'm going to get in, uh, on this uh, with the cleaning. Uh, what I have done here is I've just put a little bit of duct tape um, over my port so nothing falls down in the engine. That has worked well uh, while I've been doing a little cleaning here. It was filthy before I started cleaning it, so I'm pretty happy with how the duct tape has kept uh, the, debris, the debris out of the, um, out of the, uh, the, the engine here. Um, the only other thing I've got here is there's a small line. I, I showed it to y'all on the intake, uh, itself, intake manifold itself, but uh, that little hose goes to uh, this coolant line here, and so when you remove that, you are going to have a little, a little coolant run out, and that's what's happened here. That's that's all that is. So I'll clean that up before I reinstall the uh, the intake manifold. So I'm about ready to put the intake manifold back in, uh, and the new gaskets in. I just cleaned around the uh, intake ports there in the head, on the head, uh, just to make sure I had a good uh, mating surface and a good seal. Um, I also uh, vacuumed out uh, each port there just to make sure I didn't have any debris down there that a valve could get hung up on. So I just picked up my new intake manifold gaskets. These are by Felpro. You can uh, tell a substantial difference between the ones that came from the factory up there with the, uh, the plastic and rubber compared to the, the steel and rubber here. So um, these tangs uh, go over the, uh, 
the cylinder head bolts that are on the sides of the valley pan. I'll show you in just a minute how that goes in, but uh, the uh, the rubber uh, here is is much more substantial than what came from, from the factory. I put a little notice in the box with the intake manifold gasket that the cylinder head bolt should not be removed, that the gaskets just simply loop over the top of the head bolts. Um, in addition to that, just make sure you clean your mating surfaces as I've done and uh, don't use any uh, gasket sealer uh, when installing the gasket. bolts. So the gasket, uh, you just place it in here and as you do, it's pretty neat how they've got it designed. I like it. Um, it just drops in over the bolts just as it did there. So you want to secure it that way with it going over the bolts. And we'll put down the camera and, and uh, make sure everything is secured there. But that's how the gasket's put in place. Pretty neat. Uh, I, I prefer that to having the gasket uh, clamped to the intake and then trying to make sure that it doesn't uh, fall off or uh, get crossways as you're putting the intake in. So I'm glad that these go ahead and they, uh, they sit on top of the heads. A nice so guy. Finish cleaning the intake uh, ports on the intake manifold. Uh, this is going to be on your... Uh, your passenger side. Uh, I just wanted to be very uh, careful when I clean these ports because they are plastic and I was afraid of using anything abrasive or uh, a little razor blade or anything like that to clean them um, because I didn't I want to make sure I didn't pit anything so did the best I could with just a rag. Uh, I used a little solution of like a like that Gojo hand cleaner with some water and just uh, a little towel and just uh, just cleaned them as best I could that way and came back with the clean shop rag and wiped them off. I reinserted the foam dams back underneath the intake manifold. Um, there was some deterioration on one side of each of the dams. So what I did was I just simply reversed them so that I didn't have a lot of junk built up underneath the manifold that I couldn't get to. So this way at least I can access the outside of them if I need to, especially the front one, not so much the back one. But if I need to, uh, to get rid of some of the debris or tidy them up at some point in the future. I went ahead and decided to pull all the retaining bolts from the manifold before I reinserted it in, into the engine so they didn't get hung up on anything when I when I put the uh, manifold back into the, the vehicle. But uh, there are 10 of these bolts. You can see the uh, there are five bolt holes on each side. So I've got 10 of these and uh, once I get it seated and situated, uh, then I'll go ahead and put these uh, back in. If you're doing this job alone as I am, um, you want a lot of clearance here when you put the intake back in. What I did uh, wind up doing was taking a, a small uh, length of rope there and just tethering the, the uh, wiring harness there up against uh, one of the hood, uh, hood springs there so that I could uh, move that intake right in there without compromising. Uh, my movement and also you don't want to break any of your wiring harnesses when you put that in particularly that one that uh, goes to the knock sensors as a tip anytime that you can get rid of one of these spring loaded retaining clips hose clamps in favor of one of these that you can loosen with a flathead screwdriver or a socket uh, I suggest you do it because these are always going to be uh, easier if you have to uh, do something in the future okay so the intakes back in the vehicle uh, the only thing I did uh, before I reinserted it was I uh, went ahead and uh, again connected this uh, coolant hose, coolant line back. And then, as I had shown you all, I had a, a rope here that was holding the wiring harness out the way so that I could have a little easier access to put it back into the valley. Uh, everything went in pretty easily there as far as pushing it in and setting it on top of the new gaskets. I don't have it bolted down yet. I haven't done any of the connections yet. It's uh, uh, it's already getting kind of late, so I'm probably going to have to finish this in the morning so I have a better lighting. But uh, the, the thing that created the most problem for me is you have to remember with this uh, vacuum line here um, that it's... It, it doesn't come out with the manifold. Uh, it, it runs from the, the firewall there, around the back of the firewall. Let me see if I can get my light around to show y'all. But it, uh, yeah, it created some difficulty. You kind of just have to snake that through. There's the green access port. And it runs down the body of the uh, intake manifold to the back there. But uh, when, I, when I put it in initially, uh, that was... Uh, 
that I couldn't get it uh, moved around to the fitting in front. So I had to pull the intake back out a little bit to go ahead and snake that back through underneath the, uh, you can see where it goes. There's a little area there that it goes underneath the, uh, the two fuel lines and uh, it snugs up against the, the body of the intake there. So it's, it's gonna be to the left of the uh, fuel rail. Anyway, that was the thing that, that created uh, the, uh, the, the biggest problem for me. So anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll start on this tomorrow and I'll go through all the, uh, the connections that have to be done to get this thing back in. Of course, if you've already pulled it out, I assume you probably know which connections need to go back. But in case you forgot, uh, this is a good video to kind of brush up on uh, where things so go. the intake's back in the vehicle. There are a few things that I recommend that you do at this point um, before you begin to put the bolts back in to bolt the intake back down to the, uh, the head. Um, the first thing is make sure that the foam dams that you have underneath the intake in front and in back are in place, that they're not crossways. Um, those dams are there to prevent uh, water from getting in your knock sensors and everything underneath the intake. So just make sure those dams are both in place. Um, in addition to that, make sure that your, uh, uh, your intake flanges, the plastic intake flanges are sitting properly on uh, the new gasket. And you also need to, I would go ahead with this uh, little coolant here line that flows into the throttle body. I would make sure that you can go ahead and get that back on the, the stud there so that you can tighten that up. Because if you, if you go ahead and bolt the intake in and then you try to do that, that hose could probably be a little bit difficult. That could get kinked trying to get it back on there. Um, so those are the first things. Uh, next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and put uh, the intake bolts back in, retaining bolts back in, um, got up on top of the engine, you're going to spend a lot of time uh, climbing up on top uh, above the radiator here when doing this job, but uh, I, I took a look at all of my guide holes uh, to put the retaining bolts back in, everything was lined up nicely. So that's what we're going to do next. So I went ahead and took a look at all of my uh, my hold down bolts for the intake, everything looked good. Uh, this is an eight millimeter fitting here. This is a socket combo I'm gonna use to put these back in. Uh, just wanna make sure your grommets uh, pliable. Uh, another thing is when you put these uh, bolts in through the guide holes, you just wanna make sure since you've got the sleeve on here that you have as many threads as you can. It's gonna be a lot easier to put that down in the hole through the guide hole and into the, uh, the head when you're tightening these back down. So. Uh, you don't want to have it in that position when you put it down in there. I tried that with the valve covers the other day, and it was just a lot more difficult to get these back in. So, 8 millimeter. So, all the retaining bolts are in and tightened. Uh, everything went in fine, guided right into the, uh, the holes, except the back one here. Uh, the one in the very back, I had some difficulty with that one. I, I couldn't find the threads in there, and so I had to... I just stuck a screwdriver down in there just to make sure I had good alignment with the hole and finally with just a little bit of pressure I was able to uh, to get the threads there and put that in fine so I can't stress enough don't over tighten these I mean check your manual I can't find my manual uh, this morning but uh, check your manual for your torque specifications uh, keep in mind you do have rubber grommets here again this is a plastic, so you don't want to crack the manifold and you don't want to damage your, uh, your grommets. When you're putting this vacuum line back, just make sure it seats correctly and you push the tab in there so it catches. You don't want uh, this line to pop off and have a vacuum leak. Go ahead and reattach your uh, brake booster cable. And make sure that uh, booster cable seats all the way in there. All the threads go in uh, so you don't have a vacuum leak there either. I'm going to be replacing the PCV valve as part of this. Um, the old valve uh, clearly stuck. This is what they should sound like. Okay, when you get a new one. And, uh, I'm using this MicroGuard PCV391. So we'll put that in the hose and then uh, snug that back into the... Um, driver's side valve cover or the PCV valve is designed to allow uh, vapor uh, to be pulled from the um, 
from the valve cover uh, back into the intake to be reburned. So I've got both fuel lines back on, both the incoming and the return. They're the uh, quick uh, connect, disconnect fittings. Um, basically, you just take the uh, the female end here and you push it back onto the male end. Uh, end. The, the male end has a flange on it. Once you push the female end on there, then it uh, there's some tabs that spring loaded that uh, that catch that tab to prevent from backing backing off. That's why you got to have a special tool to remove these. But got both of those back on. You can see um, in addition to the tabs internally that keep that uh, that together. Um, there's also a little clip that I've reinstalled on the bottom one there. Uh, that clip looks like this, and that's just a secondary measure to, to a safety feature uh, to ensure that the line doesn't get disconnected. Got the new fuel, uh, got the fuel lines back together now, and we'll put the PCV uh, uh, hose and uh, put the valve back into the driver's side valve cover. Now you're going to put back all of your wiring harnesses for your fuel injectors. Uh, you've got uh, four per side. Uh, you just want to make sure once you put the um, the harness back on the the uh, fuel injector injector connector um, that it seats properly, that the tabs engage. Just give it a slight tug just to make sure that it doesn't come off. Check your wires. These are small wires. Just make sure nothing's broken or or uh, cracked or any wires are exposed you don't want to have a short and then after you get your connector uh, seated back on there properly then just make sure that you put these security tabs back that i spoke about in another video Let's see if i can get that on there okay and that goes down like that and we just give it a little tug and everything's good and seated there that security tab and then you're also going to put back your connection here at this time at the uh, throttle. Right, so on the driver's side I reinstalled the uh, knock sensor uh, wiring harness. I did uh, all, all four injectors on this side with the security uh, tabs. Um, we did the, uh, the wiring harness at the alternator at the throttle position sensor up here for it. Uh, emissions control i can't remember the name of that right now but got that installed so um i think we're about uh at the end of all the harnesses i've got one in the back here that i almost forgot about right here that i need to install that maybe would be the last harness and then we can uh, tighten down this uh, uh this nut here at, for the wiring bundle and uh and then check everything out couple other things that need to be done you need to install uh, your your uh, plate here for your your engine cover uh, three 10 millimeter bolts I think that's an eight millimeter there that uh, where the cover bolts to the top of the intake here's your cover your vortex cover um, I put the uh, air intake boot back on from the cleaner box to the throttle body those are both eight millimeter fittings and then my fuse box here, I had to reinstall my fuel pump relay. So at this juncture, I'm going to reconnect the battery. Uh, I'm going to uh, prime the uh, prime the engine with some gasoline. And uh, we'll see if we can get her to idle smoothly. All right, so I primed the key four or five times. And then I came up to my, uh, I took my cap off my rail here. Accessed my Schrader valve and I put a rag under that and uh, used a little screwdriver and had really good what appeared to be good pressure coming out here i didn't put a, my fuel pressure uh, tester on it but yeah it looked like i had really good fuel Just cranked it up uh, vehicle's idling pretty well right there around 700 rpm no service engine codes which is so i think that intake likes that new gasket everything seems to be running fine and it's uh, idling smoothly so i'm gonna take it for a test run and uh Appreciate y'all tuning in and watching. It's time for a cup of coffee now. Have a good day.